just <coughs> too late. Broadcast is live. <laughs> don't worry. They don't. They, it's just the screen, just this uh, intro screen. So don't okay, worry. Good. So nobody can Keep hear breathing. us. No, uh, they can't hear us. It's oh, they can hear us. Yeah, they can hear us. Yeah, <laughs> our, whole, our whole crew hears us. We love them. They love us. <laughs> uh, well, they, are you going to play the intro? If, if they have to watch a seat, so be it. I mean, uh, that's it. That's what we do. They, they've Black seen time worse. Of year. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. What are we have? Good well, morning, now that I know RDC how you Nation. Guys work <laughs> officially with this. Break. All right. When you guys, not. Touch, now, now you know what we mean. Ah, we love it, Chris. You're always representing. We're live, boys. We are live. And uh, a, a slight stormy Saturday morning here in Toronto, Canada. As you guys get to see, welcome, welcome, welcome. As you're coming on here live on Facebook, please let us know. What are you up to this Saturday morning? We were just finishing off some brunch we have a reindeer that came in from the north pole you guys know that 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 beautiful face you know christopher slidem which we will give an intro to but as always let us know where you guys are coming in from um simos a couple of housekeeping notes i think we we get to our announcements before we get started as as people come in number one uh this is going to be our final brunch for 2021 uh make sure you guys are checking out your inboxes some people are saying that they're not getting the emails we know we're sending them um so check your spam folders make sure to check your spam folders um and and i guess it's called like whitelisting us or something so you you actually get our emails but at any time if there is a problem please the one central place in and we've been saying it for 17 years now. The one central place that you can get a hold of any one of our, our team members, myself and Simos, is info at recanada.com. Again, that's info at recanada.com. Obviously, with the the uh, most recent uh, news that has been coming around here, uh, coming out here in Ontario, we thought it would be best for us to be in our in our own spaces. Myself and Simos and our special guest, who again you guys know, um, we, we we thought it would be best. So I hope that uh, you're fat, you're safe, your families are safe. Please, if there's something that we can do, um, we can't help everyone, but please reach out, like whatever it is. And we're not only we're not talking about the real estate stuff. Like if there's something that we can do maybe support a local business a small business uh, uh what we call a service provider plumbers electricians any of that like if there's something that we can do please 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 reach out to us and and our team will again do the best that we possibly can see so i i kind of wanted to just make uh, an announcement and and really just thank everybody because last night Last night here in 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 Toronto, we heard um, the the announcement of that our team, REC team, the fifty four agents and the eleven twelve uh, support staff, we were awarded the number two team in Canada out of twenty thousand real realtors and and teams in in the the largest franchise in Canada, which is Royal LePage Canada, we were awarded number two. I think we could go on for six hours if we had to individually thank everyone. First and foremost, without the team behind the scenes, some you know and some you guys don't know, um, without them, it, it would just be impossible. But moreover, to everybody who's watching right now live and the recording, Thank you for the support, not only this year, but all the other years in the past. I mean, it's just amazing. Simos, I mean, I'm sure you want to pipe in here, buddy. Um, well, like, well, how, 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 how does it make you feel? You know what I mean? Like, I, well, I just well, feel so grateful and blessed. Most, like, like we're, we're, not the, we're not the crew that likes to pat ourselves on the back, which is why we don't. Um, this, is a, this is a complete victory. Uh, this is uh, something that's so huge. Like what? Like the accomplishment. This is like the third or fourth year between first and second place um, switching. So it's consistent. For you to be consistent, you have to you have to deliver a service that's reliable, uh, that's valued uh, by your clients for them to come back. And that, for me, this is proof that we have been able to create loyalty, which is something you can't buy. Um, and we've been able to create an environment and culture, both on our team, for our agents and for our clients to, to be able to reach out to us without uh, them having to think. 
Our clients never have to think. They text me, they text you, they call you, they call me. And and it's like, like yesterday I was speaking to, to clients saying, hey, check it in. Have you served all your notices to all your properties for rent increases? And they're like, good one. I forgot the one in, in Calgary. I, I, I don't care. I can't help you in Calgary. But like we've created a culture of trust in a, in a culture of camaraderie uh, that, that, and that is what I'm most proud of. I walk into the office every day to see literally my brothers and sisters, literally every single day where I walk into Toronto office, downtown office, West office. I'm, I'm surrounded by family. Today I'm working from home. I've had six calls this morning from our team members. I spoke to Chris, who's our guest. I spoke to you for 20 minutes. Our life every day is this. And I just, I'm so happy to share it with our tremendous insider community. That's how I feel. Yeah. And, and, and it's not only the people that did business with us this year. Yeah. I mean, the amount of people that made introductions to their families, their friends, their colleagues, their neighbors, we know how much that how much that takes to do that, how much, how much you would need to trust us to actually put your name on sure. that introduction. And there, again, hundreds upon hundreds, we, we were able to help a little over 750 families this year. None of this is to tell, to impress everyone. It's really coming from a place of, of gratefulness. Um, and, and again, to all the other Royal LePagers in the organization, um, massive congratulations and thank you because they make us better right i mean uh, uh, we're going to obviously be speaking with chris today who 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 runs an operation of 1300 and might be a little bit more i might be off right now uh, but you know let's call it 1300 royal lepagers and our brothers and sisters here i mean they just make our game that much better right the mills team the karen miller team tom story all these guys and gals you know we watch what they're doing we we take what's working well we all share what's sure. go, what, what's working for them and what's not working so this way we don't hit our head against the wall hopefully they feel the same about us but to i you know again to 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 our to our rec insiders i mean you've given you know an indian guy and a greek guy a platform to talk on and you know i, I know our families are so thankful for it some might even say they're surprised by some of our success uh, I'm but Santa Claus. I'm well, Santa Claus. well i thought you were a reindeer today bro whatever whatever okay so i'll call you santa for the rest of the day there you go um but but a lot of this, you know, he's our special guest today. You guys have heard him and seen him on five, seven brunches. He was on the real estate marathon. Um, he's one of our favorite guests. But more than that, I mean, this guy's a partner of ours. He's been in our lives now for coming up to 13 years. We've been together. I don't even know how, like, I, it sounds weird even saying that, that that's how fast time has gone. Um, let's bring in Chris Lightham, if you don't mind. Um, for anybody who doesn't know this guy, um, again, runs the, the Royal LePage Signature Organization, 1,300 realtors, Mississauga, Highway 10 in Eglinton, Don Mills, where I'm at right now, shops at Don Mills, Don Mills and Lawrence, and downtown uh, Richmond and Bathurst. And his, his, I mean, his family, his father, his, well, starting with his brother, his father, his grandfather, they've been entrenched in real estate for decades now. And, and we, we generally speak to him when it comes to stats and what, what happened. And that's going to be our discussion today. Um, what happened in 2021 from a real estate perspective? We're going to really dive into those numbers and then we're going to give our forecasts and, and it's going to be kind of cool to, to, to go back and forth. You guys are going to be a fly on the wall of conversations that that us three have on a regular basis, but not that we always agree um, on forecasts and stuff. So it's going to be interesting. I, I I have no idea what Chris is bringing in terms of his forecast. I kind of have an idea what he's going to be talking about when it comes to the stats. But is Chris with us right now? Awesome, Chris. How you doing, buddy? I'm great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for uh, inviting me back this morning, and uh, congratulations on an incredible year. You guys have helped so many people make really great decisions in real estate. And that's really what it's about. And, you know, Simeon, I was listening from backstage and and your comment about, you know, helping people in Calgary, helping people, you know, nationally. And that is so true. And it's just that's that's what you've done from 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 the, the first day we met, you know, 13 years ago, almost 13 years ago, uh, coming into our 13th year, which is fantastic. 
you know, it's it's been about education and uh, what a great platform now that we've all migrated to out of necessity. And now it's become just a, a great opportunity for you to to reach so many people and, and to, to sh share ideas. So congratulations, yeah. guys. So, so, so boys, like exactly out of necessity, but the, the this show uh, has has now grown like where thousands of people watch it weekly um, b because we have the stats uh, mm -hmm. of, of how many people log back on. The people who don't have uh, Facebook but, but get it from YouTube the week later and all these things. So the responsibility of this show has grown uh, what started as us just reaching out to see if people needed help in COVID. The brunch started that way. We're like, everybody mm -hmm. didn't know their head from their A. Well, uh, and it was just, Samos, it was you jibber jabbering at the start, right? It was just you jibber jabbering at the start. As always, I jibber jabber. <laughs> That's what Sydney we do. Jibber jabber, Papa Elias, bro. <laughs> no, but really, though, like AKA it started out, of, out of complete nothing, complete nothing. And now we reach thousands. Uh, of people per week and we couldn't be more proud and we couldn't be more happy to, to be able to deliver a decent message uh, every second Saturday while we have coffee, while we eat, while we meet. So um, just to get on with it, um, it is December. I wish everybody um, an awesome morning. Uh, let's cover some, some real data. Uh, let's talk about where our portfolios are. Let's talk about where our portfolios are heading um into the new year uh maybe let's try to discover a couple areas that we can grow into what what kind of opportunity should we be looking for for 2022 do we got to shift do we got to change our glasses what do we got to do so i think that's where i want to take it today uh jazzy do, do you want to lead the way or chris well wanna... yeah i think i think if we can just jump into to chris's kind of stats i mean he's the one who delivers this to the 1300 and and i mean he goes out and 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 does this on a regular basis i think you know chris if you don't mind me saying i mean sure. you're the biggest real estate nerd that i know um <laughs> and um i am i am so appreciative to know you and call you a friend and a partner and all that because a lot of what i do through content was Simos does through content and our 54 agents do it comes from you right like we watch we watch your 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 monthly reporting and then you do it you know bi-weekly whatever it is we take that and we repurpose it to our clients as well and 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 so that's what i'm really excited about that people are going to get to hear it straight from you today why don't we just dive in like i is there some slides that we're going to be sharing steven as well uh, chris did you want us to bring that stuff up right now yeah, if you want to do that, okay, why don't cool. we get through some slides? Uh, Perfect. Talk about some ideas and then open it up to questions and, and we'll just, you know, we'll talk through it. But I, I think love it. I love that. And just to everybody who's watching right now, at any time, just send an email to info at recanada.com. We'll get these slides over. We, As we always say, get the music of what Chris is going to be talking about, what uh, we're going to be talking about today. Don't worry too much about cramping your hands and taking notes and all that kind of stuff. We will get you the slides. We'll get you the recording. And then, as always, throw your questions in, guys. I, I'm monitoring it. I'm not being rude with my phone in my hand. I'm actually monitoring any questions that come in. And big shout out to everybody who's putting in the comments and thank you for the congratulations but let's just jump into it steven uh let's bring those up and so chris can do his thing that's great thanks guys so what i thought i would do today the way we look at the market is we look at it from overall high level so those are kind of like the headlines you see that make the papers or make the the newscasts about oh the market's doing this doing that so <coughs> we, we always look at the, the the overall market then we look at uh, sub markets. So we'll talk quickly about a couple of sub markets that I brought along today to share. And then uh, we always go in and look at micro markets as well, because what I find it does is it kind of puts the whole world in the context. And I know that's what you do. And that's why I talk about education. Really, that's what we do. You know, people say, well, you sell real estate. Well, actually, we just we're in the education business. As far as I'm concerned, we just love to share ideas, break down the information so people can understand it. And then hopefully make really, really good decisions because obviously we're super passionate about real estate. You know, Jazzy, you said earlier, I mean, we, our family's, you know, been in it for a long, long time. Uh, we, we've been very, very, very lucky uh, to be a part of the, of real estate in, in this amazing place. You know, we all call home here in the GTA. And, uh, and so we're passionate about, you know, sharing how you can navigate through it and understand it better. So you guys, you make different, we have better decisions. So, and, and not for nothing, Chris, but like this, uh, our audience are 
they're not first time home buyers. Uh, no. They're extremely savvy uh, real estate investors. And uh, it's worth saying that both Jazzy and I uh, are very blessed as a result of what we have done to own a lot of real estate. Um, and I can tell you that if you 10x that, we might get to Chris's level. <laughs> so, and, and again, I'm not saying this for, for, for nothing. I'm saying it because Chris is guiding his family's legacy, 1,300 realtors, and all like all of us need to look to guys like you, Chris. And I'm not saying this to make you to, to, to pump your tires. I'm saying like we rely on people like yourself, like Jazz was saying, to make these decisions. So you're entrenched in it. These are the principles that you use. Take us down this slide. And that's, I was just going to say that, that Simeon, and thank you. Uh, these are the data. I'm going to share with you the data points that we look at every month personally to understand and try and uh, interpret where the market has been and where it's going. And that's why we personally use this data uh, to make our investing decisions. So um, let's get started. This is one of my favorite charts we, we put together. It's hard to see because it's small on the screen, but you can we'll share this with everybody so you'll have it. But we track, this is the average, every dot is the average sale price for the month that's from uh, August of 2017. What's interesting is that this chart used to end at the start of the 2021. This chart actually ended at a million dollars. So if you look at the left <laughs> axis there, you'll see it goes up to a million two now. Well, at the start of 2021, it only went to a million dollars because the average sale price in our market was had never gone over a million dollars ever. Well, as of March this year, we had to we had to make some adjustments to our chart to accommodate where the dots are going. You can see on the right side of the chart where the dots are th 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 through this year and they've kind of popped up. But you can also see there's kind of a natural ebb and flow of prices throughout the year that's the behavior of real estate. So we say this often, and I know you guys say it as well, is it's tough to time the market, but it's it's the time in the market that you really want to focus on. And that's what this tells the story. And to me, it's I think it's important for people to understand the fact that it can bounce around a little bit. But don't worry about it, because look at where it's come from and look at where it has gone. And that's really the message that I love about this quick overview. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and you guys have heard us say this, right? Like real estate values go up and down upwards. If you had uh, a graph that you would have brought here for the last hundred years, and I know that, you know, Chris, you've shared that with us and we've shared that with our insiders in the past. I mean, you'll see, yeah, there was some little blips, but then it just keeps going back up. It always, in my opinion, comes down to the fact that 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 this is a supply and demand um, uh, uh, metric that you always want to look at. Absolutely. And it really is something that reminds me, which we've always taken the long view of real estate. So we're not, you know, traders of real estate we're, we're we've always had the philosophy of buy and hold and have it accumulate value over time and, you know, put tenants in place and they help pay your mortgage for you. And those the basic fundamentals of investing, buy a great asset, hold it for a long time and you look like a hero. So that's kind of the overall market. Let's jump to the next slide because I want to, there's a bunch of slides I just want to pop through quickly here and then we can, you know, get into conversation. So as I mentioned earlier, we look at the overall market first. So these are, these are the headline numbers that you get reported every month that the news outlets grab and they throw out there. So the overall market numbers are huge. I always, always, the first number I look at is the one who's in the bottom right corner. And that's probably why we put it in red is that, uh, that month of inventory. So I actually, a lot of people say, well, what's, what's my house worth? Well, if you're it, great to know, and that's obviously the top left average sale price, you can see it's up 17 and a half percent year to date in the GTA, unbelievable number. To me, when you're looking, to, which is great to know, that's always exciting, but to understand where the market is heading, that bottom right number, the months of inventory is absolutely critical. So to put this into context, we normally hover in around three months of inventory. We have been for, for a number of years now. We're at less than one month of inventory. This is the whole market. This is the whole of the Toronto Real Estate Board, 60,000 realtors in the Toronto Real Estate Board servicing the greater beyond the GTA. 
there's less than one month of standing inventory. And that is figured out by taking the total number of sales divided by the standing inventory. So if we didn't get another listing, we would be sold out in about three weeks. Wow. This number tells so, so I want that to sink in. Yeah. First, the, the shortage of inventory, because yesterday I did an interview for AM640 on the Kim Control show talking about affordability. And obviously the media always wants to sensationalize it in, in 200,000 over asking. Well, I, I said, Kim, it's going to get worse because of this very factor. Period. Period. But not not to speak about affordability right now because that's a whole different bottle of, of a million ninety two up seventeen percent, so that means it's up two hundred k. That yes. means that the market has outperformed your salary, your wife's salary, your cousin Charlie's <laughs> salary by sleeping. It's not normal. No. No. It's not. Yes, we can celebrate. Whoever's a homeowner can celebrate. But if you're not a homeowner, you're crying. Yeah. yeah. So this is not cool. It's not normal. Nobody said you deserve 17% a year on an asset that you can leverage 80% of its value. We have to remember, like, this slide is everything. It is. And, and Chris, really quickly... Chris, really quickly, when you said that you use the months of inventory to somewhat forecast or, or to look at where the market's heading, how, how does somebody actually use that that number to 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 kind of see where the market's heading? Well, well Simeon used the right word the, uh, just a minute ago, was supply. So that is showing you what the supply is. So it's, it's that economics 101 that if we can remember economics 101 <laughs> a couple of years ago that I took that. <laughs> supply and demand. So these are the factors. This is this is simple economics. The tighter the supply, the higher demand. Prices go whoop. And so that's that's why we look at that number. And I'm gonna when I when we zip through to the last slide, I'm gonna show you in the micro markets how that's evolved over the last 20 months. And and you'll see a, a really perfect example. I'll show you. But this is the number that you're going is going to be your leading indicator of where values are heading. So when you see this level of pressure in a marketplace, you know that there's only one way, I'm gonna get in the screen here, only one way for that for that price to go, and that's up. And that's, as you said, Simeon, so appropriately, 17% is out of control price increases. Out of control. Like we've, the 40 year average to put in context is 6.7. In the last 40 years through highs and lows, it's averaged 6.7. So really, you 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 want to you want to understand how far off that average one way or another it is and and basically it's gone up 300% faster roughly just shy so, of 300% but, but, but chris if we were to use so the 40 this is data this is history this is fact yes it's 6.7 6.7 is not a normal number either that no. is very high so for for, for a return want, right it's yeah, massive. and what do you mean it's very high, though, Simos? Like, why do you say that? I, I mean I... that the, the normal, on, on a global basis, the normal real estate market, the average through the history of time is between 3 and 5% based on regular employment, factories opening, factories closing, economy shifting, all the different things that affect life and civilization and since the beginning of time markets go up markets go down but three to five percent is a regular expectation seven percent seven percent to be factual over 40 years that's three <laughs> generations of people growing through that to be at seven percent on an asset that you can leverage Mm -hmm. Meaning that you put down 20%, you borrow 80, and the whole asset is going up by 7%, everybody becomes wealthy. Mm -hmm. Wealthy. Yes. Now, make that 17.5%. If this happens, which we'll get to predictions, but let, let, me, let, let me blow the surprise, for me anyways. <laughs> it's going to be another 17% next year. 
Okay, that's your number. I'm writing no, that no, down. Okay, so my number is. <laughs> you get that? My, my number is I four. got that. I got that. No, okay. my, my number is hey, fourteen. Good thing is, good thing is, is that we record these things, right? Know, so we're we gonna be able them. to come back. We, we, we <laughs> got them. We got so, them now, right? So, so, so what I'm saying, guys, is a million. So you put down two hundred in one year. You can expect monopoly value because we don't sell real estate; we hold it. Monopoly value of a buck fifty plus. Yeah. Come on, man. That's hard to believe. Come on, man. Hard to believe. So let's break it down. Let's go to the next slide. So now that's the overall market. Now this is how you're going to see how this how this breaks down. So look at Toronto. So this is the 416. When we talk about Toronto, this is this is the what, what we term as the 416 because that's the original area code uh, that that everybody in Toronto has bef and the the what is now the um, amazing markets around the original uh, city of Toronto are uh, the 905 regions because that's the area code for the telephone number. So this is the 416. And you'll see the months of inventory in the 416. So I, I'm going to show you a, a number of, of, of different uh, sub markets now that make up the GTA. And you're going to see the number in the right hand corner bounce around a little. So you can see there's actually more inventory in the 416. I want to point out because and that is directly related to the density of condos. So in our marketplace, if you're if you're watching and you're and you're in Toronto or you're around the area, you understand what I'm talking about. If you're from outside of the GTA or 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 in different parts of the world, Toronto, the density in Toronto for condominium high rise is the highest density in our region. And that's where you'll see where there's a little more standing inventory. You're also going to note and might be surprised like, look at what Toronto prices have done this year. Mm -hmm. They've only gone up six and a half percent only. <laughs> it's like, oh, I only got six and a half. I didn't get 17. And that's an interesting piece to understand because Toronto has been built out for decades. There's no more land. There hasn't been for decades. All gone. It has, it has always led in pricing. So you can see the average sale price at a million fifty eight. Uh, and that's average, including condos and everything else. Detach is over a million eight now in, in the 416 to buy a detached house on average, on average. So those prices, because what I would suggest is that market's been fully priced for a number of years, it has less volatility. Mm -hmm. So to go up from this po high point already, you're going to see less volatility. And that's part of the reason why you're not seeing as much price pressure. The other piece is is during um, this you know, wild ride we've been on uh, with COVID-19, condominiums have had less price, <coughs> price, which make up a significant part of sales. So those are two factors you want to keep in mind. Do you want me to just plow through these guys? And well, then well, 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 really quickly, just really quickly, Chris, because yeah, yeah. um, I know there's somebody probably be watching or listening right now saying, okay, well, hang on. If, if Toronto's at 6.8 or 6.9, because I, I, I'm having a little trouble myself right now with my eyes as well, seeing exactly what the number is. Call it the 6.8, 6.9. It, well, 6. should I even... 6.4, I'm wearing glasses. 6.4, 6. awesome. Good, good, good. Thanks, Santa. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> should I invest in Toronto if it's not going up as much? And and maybe maybe I should look at the places that are, are giving me the the 17, 16, the double digits. And so what would you say to somebody that might be possibly scared that it's only going up by by 6% and 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 not maybe wanting to invest into Toronto, Chris? Well, my my first my first comment is it depends. It depends on what your personal goals are. And this is where you guys come in. And, and I know how you do really, really in-depth portfolio analysis for everybody uh, who works with you. And you do that for the, like, this is a great example of why you do that analysis and help people navigate where they want to go. Because it really depends on what your goals are. The Toronto market, there's less pricing volatility. So it might not hit glamorous, you know, sounding seemingly glamorous 20%. You're going to see some even higher numbers here shortly. Um, increases. However, there's more consistency I find in the market. So less volatility in the pricing, which means that God forbid there's a bump in the road, which, you know, there will be, there'll be something. I don't know, you know, the, everybody's going to say, well, look in your crystal ball and tell us what that is. We, you know, it's hard to say, is it interest rates moving too quickly? Is it, is it another COVID variant? Is it, who knows what it is, but there'll be something when you have higher 
you know, moves, you also can can bounce around on a broader range, right? So if it went up 20% in 905 in a certain submarket, which we'll look at here shortly, there may be more room for it to feel a bit of a correction. In Toronto, it's going to it's going to be a little more stable just because so so you take to, there's higher risk for higher return. Yeah. In, in a sense. On the other hand, another factor you might say is, well, in the Toronto market, the affordability of just getting into an investment is it's just more expensive. So maybe I, I would prefer to spread around and buy two or three units in a sub market outside of 416 than one unit in in Toronto. So that's why I say it depends. So you really it's it's tough to say right or wrong. It's more it depends on the individual's goals, needs, you know, which you guys will dive in. Well, on, quickly, on a, 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 a quick shameless plug. If you're looking into having a portfolio analysis done, we call it the REC REAP, R-E-A-P, Real Estate Action Plan. All you got to do is we made it, guys, made it very, very simple. Info at recanada.com in the subject line. Just write REAP, R-E-A-P. Spell it wrong for all we care. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Tyler and 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 our team will make sure that you sit down with one of our um, REC investment coaches. Um, and big shout out. I apologize. I should have even made this announcement earlier. For everyone who knows Tyler Walburn, he has been now, I guess the word is newly promoted to REC's investment coach. This guy's been with our organization for coming up to eight years, really moved up the ranks. Big, big shout out to Tyler Walburn. I think he's somewhere in the comments, but most of you know him. Um, he's now promoted to our REC investment coach. You're going to be talking to him a lot more, especially if you send that email to info at RECCanada.com. For everybody else who's just coming on right now, there's been a big surge. I guess people are getting a little late. It's snowy outside in Toronto. Just just wanted to welcome you and thank you. We're being joined by Chris Slidem, who is the broker record of Royal LePage Signature 1300 Realtors. Yes, he is dubbed the biggest real estate nerd on this <laughs> planet. And you're gonna you're finding out. Everybody who's with us has already found out why, but you're gonna find out more. I like what you said, Chris. Let's bounce around into the next slide, Stephen. Yep. Um, and then we can kind of just speak about um speak about kind of the months of inventory and what's going on in the rest of the GTA. So here we are jumping into one of the sub markets of the 905 region and look where that number went in the bottom right corner. Like this is crazy. There's two weeks of standing inventory of any price, any type, any size, any shape, no matter how much money you've got to spend. There's two weeks of inventory in the city of Mississauga, a massive, amazing community that makes up part of our GTA. It's crazy. Look at the, the price increase in Mississauga this year was 14 and a half percent. So not as high as some of the other mar sub markets we're going to look at in a minute, but tremendous growth this year, two weeks of standing inventory. So if you're looking for a growth opportunity, I love Mississauga. I, we talked about it earlier, supply and demand. There is no supply. That's the challenge. But there are some great condominium developments coming in that region that I think. Why do you think this is, is Chris and Simos? I mean, wh why are we seeing only two weeks in Mississauga? Like, why do we think that Mississauga is, uh, you know, seeing this type of growth? There's no supply there either. There's really no supply and the average sale price. So for detached houses in Mississauga are in around 1.4 million. So, you know, the city of Toronto is 1.8, Mississauga is 1.4 now. Um, and and so it's, a, a you know, again, even though it's a lot of money, I think we all have to remember that. Chris, Chris, I'm, I'm going to stop you. You know why? I'm going to stop you because, Jazz, you asked why. So I don't want to be the advocate or or the promoter of the GTA, but let me answer why mississauga because it's right beside the airport because it's the leader in all industrial in the entire country because it has access to six different major highways oh do you want to ask me about durham okay because it has this that the other the gta the gta is just one of the best places to live it is there, there, there's a reason this demand exists is because people want to be here our problem is that our laws and our municipalities simply can't get out of their own way to make enough change to let supply in. We keep battling the same freaking ghosts year after year, seeing the problem. 
Why does someone want to live in Oakville? Because Oakville is gorgeous. Why does someone want to live where I live, Britannia and Credit View? Because I literally have, I don't know how many hundreds of kilometers of trails behind my house. There is Heartland Center right beside my house, which every shopping mall that exists. New LRT coming. New LRT, like any, pick the area in the GTA and you can answer the question, why? Why do? Why is there half a month of inventory? Because there's more people than homes. That's it. There's no no supply left. So, so let's so jump to the next slide real quick, please. and then we'll get through these markets, and we can. So look at this. Bottom right corner, Brampton. Hey, where my paisans are. That's where my it. Paisans are. <laughs> ten, 10 days of inventory, no matter how much money you've got to spend. Prices jumped 23% this year. So here we are. We're jumping even higher. So you saw that the city of Toronto was 6.4. Mississauga was 14. Brampton's 23, over 23% price increases this year. I mean, it's off the charts. Do you think that's some, something to do with the fact that people just want some bigger homes maybe as well? Like, Because Brampton Absolutely. doesn't have the transit that the Mississaugas, the Durhams, and obviously Toronto has, right? We don't have a subway. Yeah, we got a couple of GO stations, uh, GO trains and stuff like that, but that's really on the southern part of Brampton. I really know Brampton well because I've been living there for the last six, seven years. Um, what do you guys think it is? It, 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 it's to get the 2,700, 2,800, 3,000 square foot homes? 100%. And yeah. look at where the prices have come from. Look at the bottom left corner. You can see what that's like the the, the month of, of November uh, for the last four years. Four years ago, we all should have bought some houses in Brampton at $685,000 average sale price now at 1.1. Well, Chris, I mean, real story. Four years ago, exactly, I bought my, my property at 740000 It's you worth remember. now. Jazzy, yeah. do you remember when you were buying was, that house, how terrified you were? A hundred percent. I was literally in the chair that I'm sitting in now yes. pointed the other like way. yesterday. I was showing you the floor plan and, and, and $745,000 four years ago, I bought this property. And guys, it's not like a, a castle. It's not a huge like acreage. None of that. Okay. I've lived very modestly. <laughs> However, my neighbor sold in august of this year i did pretty similar home pretty similar lot for 1.7 oh Oof. so, so let, let me let me just tell you about <laughs> the emotion that jazz because like it's important to know we were sitting in that freaking office and jazz is like Simos, this isn't an investment this is my home should i be spending this kind of money am i an idiot he goes to me <laughs> should i be spending 700 like what are we like, I'm going to spend this much money. Do I really need this, et cetera? I was like, well, you, we just had the two kids. Like, our kids are a year apart, both of them. Like, we had a kid every year for four years. Um, and we're, we're talking about it, and it was almost 800000 And he's calculating the mortgage payment. And then one year passed. So I was like, oh, I think we did okay with these homes. Because four years ago, I moved from Oakville to Mississauga. These happened at the same time. And a year later, oh, I think we're doing okay. And now we're talking about the house as being almost two million bucks. Yeah, it's time, and not, and again, to your point earlier, Simon, I think you said, or, or Jazz, you mentioned it's monopoly money. You're not selling, right? You're not no. doing. And so if it pulls back because we showed at the first chart that things bounce around, it's okay because it's over the long term. I mean, sure, then math it all sounds all exciting right now, but it really what's 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 even more exciting is when we get on the brunch in uh, in uh, December of 2031 uh, yeah, oh. and, uh, and, and say, wow, guys, look at what's happened in the last 10. But yeah. this, is, this is crazy. Like that bottom right number, that red number is going Brampton. to give you a leading indication of where prices are going in the, in the submarket of Brampton. Because it, that represents 10 days. That's 10 yeah. days. It's, yeah, it's, and I was going to... I was going to quickly mention, like in terms of what you just said, Chris, like with prices going up and down personally, as long as it doesn't go less than seven hundred and forty five thousand dollars, I'm happy. Why? Because anybody, anybody, anybody who's new to real estate and specifically real estate investing, I've also paid off four years of mortgage. Mm -hmm. And now I can go to Chris D'Souza 
one of our mortgage brokers and three others that we work very closely with and say to him, well, I've paid off X amount. How can I, how can I actually pull out some equity to go and tax free, by the way, how do I pull out some equity and actually increase my portfolio now? I mean, knock on wood, chances of that thing going down back to 745 is very, 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 very low. However, the, this, this, this paper money, we've been calling it monopoly money, is, is I'm really excited about it. It makes me happy, but I don't need to see that much growth because I know my mortgage is being paid down. Now, this is my principal residence, so it was my money that I used to pay it down. You know, is it an asset? Is it a liability? We can always get into that conversation. However, when if I had a tenant paying it down how nice is that someone mm. else was paying down my mortgage and i was still able to go to the bank let's jump around uh, uh steven yeah let's get to the next one yeah oakville i mean you, you mentioned oakville uh, simeon great place to live 19 percent price increase uh this year you can see where prices have come from over the last four years you can see a little bit more standing inventory than than brampton the average price in oakville is a higher uh, number so you're going to have a little a bit more inventory there you can see the number of sales have jumped uh, uh, unbelievable there, there aren't very many condos so there are in the condo corner you see there's only 57 units sold in the whole month of, of november in oakville just because there isn't inventory yet awesome projects coming in the pipeline under construction. Yeah, I, I would like to, to talk about that. I think a lot of people in the last couple of years um, didn't realize, didn't realize the, that the condo market is not something that's exclusive to Toronto. So I think there was a, a, a massive awakening and a massive wave um, in, in condominium investing in the 905, where factually, uh, there was more condos sold in the 905 for the first time in history rather than in the 416. Yeah. So condo sales for the first time in history of the GTA, the 905 outsold the 416. And that trend is going to continue for two reasons. Number one, the fact that Toronto's development scene is lagging, meaning there's further red tape. There's new zoning coming in that's going to discourage more um, development. And the 905s are rapidly increasing. People are very, very okay with living at Dundas and Trafalgar in Oakville and hopping on the GO train to downtown because there's expresses, because there's improvements, because they can work from home, because of all the myriads of reasons. So they can pick up a beautiful two bedroom plus den because we also saw that trend develop uh -huh. where yeah. our investors are no longer looking for the one bedrooms in the studios. People are making homes out of condos now for 10 years, not for two years, for 20 years, not for five years. They're raising families in condos now. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So the, the trends we have to watch mm -hmm. and you can pick up a two bedroom plus 10 for 750 in Oakville, where in Toronto, you can pick up a one plus 10 for 750. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the choice for a 28 year old couple that's looking to, 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 to make their bones, to make, to start their life together, they don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. So we, we are seeing the, the rise the massive rise, like Mississauga, we did three projects in the last uh, year that we launched in Mississauga, all with tremendous success. The numbers are staggering. Our guys are making money. Oakville, next year, watch out. Anything that launches between Oakville and Burlington is literally sold out within 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So you got to act fast. You have to be ready. You have to be on the wait list. Yeah. Um, Georgetown. So again, that corridor, that Western uh, Milton uh, Milton, we had Fernbrook launch Millhouse. Yes. Uh, we had, um, uh, who was it that did Connect? Uh, uh, Linvest launched Connect. Those were in the last month, guys. Gone. Yeah. Gone. So so that whole corridor of, of the 905 in the West, because of the of, of the GO train access, because of, of the, the beauty in the region, and the affordability or unaffordability more towards Toronto are going to be blowing up again next year. Something to watch Agreed. if you're looking for that kind of product. Agreed. So let's jump quickly to the next uh, sub market. 
uh, York region. So that's just north, the north side of Toronto, um, you know, Vaughan, Markham. Uh, you can see that what's happened there, average sale price up 20%. There's, there's a little more inventory there in that marketplace, which is great that there's inventory somewhere. It's not a lot though. It's three weeks of inventory, which is bizarre. Again, crazy low levels, tremendous pricing pressure. You can see where prices is, have come from uh, this uh, uh, November over November. They're up 27 percent November over November. The top line number there shows 20 percent because that's averaging year to date all the months of, of the year. The bottom left just gives you the, the month November month of November itself. And you can see the growth that we've seen. It's unbelievable. More units. What we're seeing there, you can see what, which is also interesting. And you talked about the growth in condominium units in the 905. York region uh, has uh, a tremendous growth happening with the smart centers, uh, massive, incredible development. I mean, Artwalk just launched their newest, uh, you know, newest uh, uh, launch there. It's going to be an unbelievable place to live. Subway right at your doorstep. And you can see where the, the activity has gone, 320 unit sales. That's because there are new developments coming in and actually coming for delivery now in York region. And so, so that's great. Let's jump to the next one because I'm, I'm cognizant of time here. Durham, this is crazy. Ooh. So we're going east now. I wanted to show Durham because look at what that number says. Jazzy, I know you can't see it because it's uh, far 0.36. Yeah, I got this one. I got. 36 months. But yeah, 0.36. No, but look at the price. Look at what the oh. prices did in Durham. 31%. 31% price growth in Durham this year over last year. Shout, shout out to our Durham team and our Durham clients. Uh, <laughs> now that I know you're all rich, I'm going to hit you up for some. <laughs> no, it's real time. <laughs> now for sure you need to be sitting with one of our mortgage advisors and sitting down and, and taking a look at what it would cost to pull out some equity to build out that portfolio. But 36%. I don't think in the 17 years that I've been doing this, I've seen never, no. something as high. Am I am I right there, Chris and guys? Yep. Like, the, no, yep. right? We've never seen no. anything 36. What what is it? Is it the fact that you're kind of close to Toronto with the GO train, like the Whippies and the Oshawa's? Exactly. You, you've yeah. got the GO train. You've got access to downtown. You also have a more approachable price. So you'll see that the average sale price this year is still under a million dollars. So going into the year, it was closer to seven. Well, you can see last year it was seven sixty-two uh, uh, in the month of November. So it's a it's a more approachable price for first-time buyers. You can move out of the city of Toronto, where the average sale price for a condo is is seven hundred, is eight hundred thousand dollars, and move to move up to having a backyard, having a driveway, having your own home. So I think that's put tremendous pressure on price. Chris, I have a, I, I, Chris, I have a really quick question. Sorry, Simos. But, and I just thought of this as I was looking at Chris. And so I said 17 years for me, Simos, 17 years. Chris, just to put you on the spot really quickly, how many years have you been like a broker for now? What are we at? I, like? I, don't, even, I don't talk about that. You anymore. don't talk about it. Okay, got it. I know it's more than 17 years. I know it's more than 17 years. Here's just the kidding, question yeah. I no, have. We're 27 put, years now. 27 to be. Okay, so. We're talking about $920,000 here in Durham average. Toronto was above a million. The question I have for you, if you can go back 20 years ago, 25 years ago, and the price back then was call it 300,000 maybe in Durham or probably a little less than that. And in Toronto, in Toronto, it's safe to say it'd probably be about 400,000-ish like average probably if we look back, less than that. At that time, at that time, was the the concern and the lack of a better word, rhetoric around pricing similar? Like, oh my God, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars! It's crazy that that's what the average price is. Is that what you were hearing and feeling and seeing at that time? I, I think, it, and you made a good point talking about you know laboring over that decision to buy your own home. I think at any moment in time in real estate, we all feel that way. So you bring up a great point because absolutely, absolutely. Now, prices weren't moving as quickly. I mean, back when I got in the business in the early 90s, it was it was uh, it was a tough time. You know, the market was was correcting heavily from a massive, you know, heat up in the late 80s. And so real estate, the vibe was much different as prices started to build after 97. 
it, it was the same. It was a different type of, of fear because we had just come through a major correction. Uh, and so where the world learned a lot about real estate, learned a lot about lending and how to be stabilized markets. I mean, today it would be hard to believe that a massive correction would happen because there's so much knowledge globally now of how to manage that. But it was a, it was every moment in time, whether it's today you're buying an investment property or five years ago, it's easy. You know, hindsight's my dad always said hindsight's 2020, right? You look back and like, oh, geez, I should have bought 10 of those. You know, it, it, sure. But at the moment in time, you were laboring over that decision. So, yes, the answer is simple. Every moment in time, it's a bit this is a big purchase, whether it was 350 grand it was a lot of money 20 years ago, 30 sure. years ago. Right. Just yep. as a million bucks is a lot of money today, but that's and, the market we're in. And and that's, I think you always labor on those decisions. And I guess, and, and, and I guess the reason I asked that question is because I just have this gut feeling that in 10 years from now, this number in Durham is going to be 1.8 million, like literally double. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. And, and we're going to be looking back exactly the way that we look back to 10 years ago um, and saying that it's half the price that it is now. And, and it just makes me think, it just made me think when you were talking about these numbers, let's yeah. jump over to the next area or are we, yeah. no, there should be La I think there's one last slide. So this, Perfect. I won't go through the whole thing. You guys, when, if you know, you're, you're, you've got so many great people on here. I don't want to, <laughs> I hope you're all drinking coffee to keep you awake with numbers. But <laughs> what I do want to point out is one, so we do this. The, so that those are sub markets. Then we get into the micro market. So this is, if you're looking at a certain area, a certain product type and, and and, and I know you do this with all your clients in, in your uh, portfolio analysis, but let's imagine we had a condo apartment in CO1. So if you're not familiar with, with, the, with the real estate, uh, the Toronto Real Estate Board divides up the market. So CO1 is our downtown core market, a ton of uh, fabulous buildings, beautiful location for investing, thousands and thousands of amazing jobs, uh, massive tech job growth, everything going on. But look at how the CO1 market. So if you look at the first column, you'll see that we, what we've done there is we've showed what was going on in February of 2020 from the, so we're going from the bottom up February, 2020, October, 2020 to November of 2021. And the first column there would be condo apartments, in CO1. So this is all condo apartments of all shapes and sizes just in that CO1 market, which is the west side of Young Street, uh, south of Bloor. If you know Toronto at all, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know it, just stick with me. It's our core market. It's super busy. It's right near the financial core of the city. But look what, and this is, you asked the question early on today about those months of inventory and why I watch so closely. This is, this is, tells you the story. So pr February, 2020, we obviously purposely chose that because that was the, the pre -pandemic. month before pre-pandemic. Exactly. Look at the average sale price, 840,000, 1.1 months of supply. If you look, if you were in the market at that point, you'll remember that it was busy talking about the roaring 20s. We took off like a rocket in, in the first two months of the year. Then fast forward into the middle of of the uh, of COVID and the first year of COVID, October 2020, five and a half months of standing inventory. And look at what happened to prices. Prices dropped almost $100,000. And so this was last fall. We were sitting with five and a half months of inventory. I know we were talking about it. I said this to everybody who was who cared to listen to me ramble on about stats. I said, folks, if you're considering buying real estate in the GTA, CO1 condos is the place to look. Five and a half months of inventory. This is because Airbnb was was shut down. The Kids perfect storm. At it was the perfect storm. Right? It went on sale. Got, you didn't have to live there. Sale. You didn't have to go to work, right? You didn't have to go to your office to work. You you, you couldn't you couldn't go to U of T to school or Ryerson or uh, you know George Brown or the great uh, you know institutions we have in the core of the city. You, you couldn't live there. You didn't have to live there. So people left. So uh, tenants left. Investors got worried. Some investors who weren't listening closely to what we were saying might not our people. Sold. I'll tell you that much. Because right. we called every single one personally. I said, don't you dare 
Don't you dare. We actually, and this, I is, know where, you did. Uh, this is where I never say very nice things about jazz ever, <laughs> but, but I will say this. It's last Christmas. Year, this you're time, Santa. Hey, buddy, it's Santa. You're Christmas. I knew I was going to get a gift hey, at one point in the in the. That's year. right. Here, so here's my gift. Say, Go. Go. Let, let me say this. Last year, this time, jazz was standing on the rooftop screaming, downtown is on sale. Yes. And he personally put, what, a couple dozen people into deals? Yep. Like this time last year, we're still making calls. Guys, listen, it's on sale. And, and here's the proof in the pudding. And not to blow smoke up Chris's ass again, but look, you know what he was saying to me at that point? We were talking, and I remember right outside, uh, we were just kind of pa uh, uh, crossing paths, and we started to get into a conversation. What you said, Chris, to me at that time was, the the investors that have have a stomach right now and can actually take a little bit of a loss on the negative cash flow they and 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 as long as they hold on to it they're going to win then when you start to do the math you're like yeah you're right because you have five five and a half months of inventory massive buyers market haven't seen a buyers market in downtown toronto I'm all, again, never, never in my, in my career, seven, not in my 17 year career, not five and a half months of inventory for sure. You see the values are dropped. All you had to do is have a little bit of a stomach to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to be negative $300 a month. I'm going to be negative $500 a month, which at the end of the 12 months is $6,000. But what values have done now, the left pocket lost $6,000 at the end of the year, but you gained a lot more into your right pocket with the equity that you were able to build because you just weren't able to see values drop before. So fantastic. I mean, just, go just, just give me those tidbits. Go back big to the shout out to those time. clients, guys, who closed. That We had people closing in two major buildings, 330 yeah. Richmond and Playground last year this time. Yeah. You 36 were closing people. in the middle of the worst market for rental on the worst market in Toronto's history and you closed and you had faith and big shout out to Katie Sakrin, Gevik, to, to the whole leasing team that was going in and out of infected freaking buildings, breaking their back and putting all sorts of risk on their own to fulfill their mandates. God bless you. It paid off and everybody is better off today than they were a year ago. And everybody has a major six figure win on their hands. Now, God bless you. Say that. There, you, yeah, there it is, right? Look where the average sale price is now. It, we, we said it that last last November, they announced the vaccines, uh, gave, gave us a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. It's still, obviously, we're still navigating through, but we're in, we are in a much better place uh, regardless of what's going on right now. And you see what happened to prices, 846000 almost a $90,000 uh, increase in average sale price in uh, in 12 months. And so there you go. And look at what inventory did. So this is where those inventory numbers, you're back to one and a quarter months of standing inventory. So it went from 1.1 months pre-COVID to five and a half months of standing inventory down to one and a quarter months of standing inventory because you know that cities are not over with. They're not dead. We just had a very purposeful pause in that marketplace. And there was a sneaky opportunity, as we like to say, to buy yeah. and that was it and we said to folks you gotta buy if you're interested now's the time it was the time and people are gonna say oh i've missed that opportunity no you haven't you haven't missed an opportunity for real estate because the other interesting thing is there's even if, if the way the market's gone if you look back to february 2020 to today it's about even so that means almost in in basically in 20 months there's been technically zero price appreciation in that time period so there's been no growth in condos in CO1 in that time period. So there's still a massive opportunity, I believe, to look at that marketplace and invest there for the long term. And that's the difference with interpretation of data. Some Absolutely. people will say the market is up 100,000 in one year, but factually, two years ago and today are identical. You are still buying resale downtown Toronto for prices from two years ago, yep. and the market is not back. No, meaning that that half the office towers are still vacant because they're not sending people back yet. That's right. So the minute the minute Toronto opens for business, and it will, it will. It's coming. Whether it's in again, we're seeing all the the disgusting variants and things roaring back, and we're back from home for brunch. But it doesn't matter. Three months, six months, nine months. You can drag it out. COVID. Yeah, it'll be back. We're resilient.
You're not going to get us down. No. Nope. And I think as investors, this is the you know at times like this, we saw March, April. Well, call it you know really uh, May, June, 2020. There was a lot of compelling buying opportunities that started to present themselves, and I think we're in that time frame now still because people are going to start to get scared. And I'll take this, you know, I didn't coin this. This is our good, good friend, Warren Buffett, who said, when people are greedy, be fearful. When people are fearful, start to be greedy and, you know, use that word greedy um, uh, lightly. But a time like this where there is, again, a little bit of uncertainty going on. Yes. If you're an investor that has 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 checked off the box in terms of sitting down with a mortgage advisor, we would love it, love for it to be someone on our team, but it doesn't need to be. Do it with your cousin Charlie. It doesn't matter. Just do it the right way. You sit down with our team and you're prepared. You are going to be able to take action. And the best thing with real estate, not sure if you see the sign above my head, you kind of see it. It says ready, fire, aim above my head. Real estate is 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 the best strategy that allows you to do that. Why? Because you can tie up property. Yes, I know there's a lot of multiple offers and stuff like that, but there's still a lot of opportunity to tie up property and then do the due diligence. This coming January, we are going to do a, an, an REC investor marketplace. Some of you attended the first ever marketplace back in the fall of this year, but we're doing it again because people loved it. It's essentially the only real estate investor flea market that exists anywhere in the world. It, 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 I don't think any other platform, any other company, any other organization does it, where we are going to bring three to four different type of investment strategies to you all in one hour. It's speed investing. It's investing on steroids in one hour. We bring four, three to four different strategies and you get to pick and choose. And it's going to be I, killer. What I want to do, I want to, I want to invest into a pre-con. I want to invest into maybe a lease to own strategy. I want to invest into a student housing. I want to invest into a property in Florida. It, it's going to be a myriad of, of, of types of strategies. It's going to be happening in January. Make sure to check your inbox. And so if you're new to our world today, send that email to info at recanada.com. Like you're to the make worst sure you secret keeper of all time. Like, Sorry? He's not like ever, ever. Oh. No. Like, can we not do like some anticipation to our no. guys? Like, nothing? we try, we try. Like, I think, I think if we were better, quote unquote, off marketers or something, <laughs> we, we would hold off. We just can't. We like to blabber. We like to go on and on and on. But make sure you join us on uh, in January for an REC Investors Marketplace. You are going to love it if you didn't so, attend. So if you fall. are going to let the cat out of the bag, I'm telling, um, I'll tell you right now, we're working on the most exciting shit ever. Um, so we have at least. For next year, I know we're working uh, for York Region will be late spring, early summer. Uh, remember, Jazz, you were talking about you spoke to James. Um, so I spoke to James. Uh, it's Pemberton that's going to be doing an entire master plan community. So we're talking about a thousand plus units, uh, heart of Richmond Hill. So it's going to be a massacre. There's going to be thousands of people in that lineup. And I can tell you, we have a guaranteed allocation of a minimum of 30 units. So that's going to be uh, summer. In January, there's three or four amazing launches in the 905. That's all condo stuff. Right now, we're putting the finishing touches on a on a volume deal of RTOs, LTOs, lease to owns, rent to own, whatever you call it. So we're bringing in two. Uh, well, he's the president of the Canadian Real Estate, uh, the Canadian Rent to Own Association, which is called CARP. Um, that's Terry and his group. They're literally going to have it turnkey, turnkey for us. So as investors, we put our money down, we put the deal in place, you get the financing, and you literally are going to be sitting on 800 to 1100 bucks a month in cash flow with a beautiful nugget at the end of the three-year period that's going to turn back a 20% plus return uh, year over year. So Just, we're working on the most beautiful things for you. 2022 is going to be the year of who, Jazz? The year of you. Bad. The year of you. That's Bad. what REC is doing. 2022 is going to be the year of you, meaning we're going to reverse engineer what you're looking for. Just send us an email to make sure that you're getting all of our emails and our opportunities and our education and our content. Can we get to a couple of forecast guys? I kind of want to put all of us on the spot today. Um, and, and we'll start with you, Chris. 
What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts on what values will do by the end of next year? Just give us a range. That's a great question, Jazz. And, and I put a lot of thought into it and I, I, I'm struggling to really, you know, to really understand yet where it's going to go. I think the unknown for me is really trying to figure out how many, you know, what, what the rates are going to do. I don't really think rates are going to be that big of a situation. The other un unknown for me right now is how um, the world's going to evolve with this existing variant. We don't know enough yet about it. I think ultimately it's going to be just fine. So take trying to balance these, I'm, I'm going to say mid to high single digits, mid to high single digits. So five okay. to nine range, somewhere in there. And part of me is saying that because I don't want it to go up any faster. I really don't. I, I mean, I know it's fun to talk about 17% this year and it's exciting as, a, as, a, as an investor, as a homeowner. I mean, you guys always are talk so much about investing and I know we're also talking about people's houses. We all, you know, everybody, you know, just just looking at trying to, 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 to raise a family or, 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 you know, grow a family or whatever it might be, or to downsize if maybe families grown up and, and moved on and you're downsizing. It's all these different things. It's super exciting, but maybe it's because I'm, I mean, first of all, I, I'm always a, a conservative kind of person, but I also, I don't want it to be double digits because, you know, it, it's, it's not, it, it's healthier. I think slow and steady for me wins the race. So I'm saying five to five to nine is my, my prediction. I I'm going to come back to you for another prediction on another metric as well. Um, Seamus, what's your number, buddy? I think you kind of already said it. It's going to be no, no. Well, well, Chris and I, I, I. I'm going to give you my prediction right now because this is for got the record. It. Um, I, I, I don't agree with Chris. Um, and um, based on, on the facts that I see, there's not going to be enough mortgage upticks in the next year, meaning that money will remain the cheapest ever. Mm -hmm. The supply has not been addressed. It hasn't been touched. It's only going to get worse factually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I don't think COVID is, although it's the most real it's ever been, I think COVID has sunk in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of our life now. So I don't think COVID is going to be solved. And I don't think COVID is going to get worse. I think COVID is part of our lives now. Uh, for the next, for the foreseeable next two to five years, in my opinion, so it's not scary anymore from a perspective of what will it do to the market. People are working, people have accepted it. So I think the cheap money and the shortage of supply is going to drive numbers in the twelve to fourteen percent range. I think okay. it's going to be double digits, and I'm I'm predicting twelve to fourteen percent. Well, it's funny that you said that if somebody could see my my table right now, um, I wrote down 13% because I wanted to write it down before you guys came up with your number. 13A, it's my lucky number, uh, but that's not the only reason. I do believe that there's going to be um, more product coming to the marketplace, finished product coming to the marketplace, well, which was is going to be absorbed really quickly, but at least, at least that kind of cools down um, and provides some supply to the marketplace. I don't think, and I like what uh, uh, Chris said in terms of none of us want to see the 17, 20%. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, the real estate agents love it and all that kind of stuff. Look, are we real estate agents? Yes, we're licensed. But I think you can tell we're a little different than everybody. And I don't mean that in a good way or a bad way. It's just that that's not like we're investors first and foremost. So we want to make sure that that value stay, you know, uh, affordable as well because we invest into real estate. And so I think the number is going to be 13. There's another forecast I want you guys to do and I'll start it off this time is rents because we're investors. So we know who our customers are. Our customers are tenants. We need people renting. And 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 so I want to get a number from you guys. As you think about it, I'll give you my number. I think rents, because values are going to go up. That's not going to allow a lot of people to, uh, as much people to get into the marketplace to buy. So I actually think rents are going to be going up in and around the five to 6%. That's my forecast. Okay. Um, my forecast is that rents are going to go up five to 6% next year because of the fact 
there will be a little uptake in interest rates. The cost of borrowing goes up, makes it a little tougher for somebody who's on the fence and thinking about buying. They're not going to be able to buy. They're going to rent. Great for investors. So when investors also talk about, oh my God, rates are going up. Look, a little uptick in rates, yes, it changes your cost of borrowing as an investor, but you get more customers, more tenants, and, and you get a bigger pool of tenants because the ones that we're thinking about buying, they're not going to buy anymore. And so they're going to be renting. Uh, over to you, CMOS. What's your thoughts on rents? Um, rents, I, I like your number, uh, the five to six. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict that for the 905. Um, but for 416, only because COVID uh, had dropped rents about 15% last year. Mm -hmm. And we're doing the renewals for obviously our own portfolios. Uh, but uh, we're also, we also represent just over 200 landlords downtown. And we literally just served all those notices in the last two months for, the, for all the COVID tenancies are now going into uh, year two. Uh, so we're increasing rents by about literally 15%. So they're going from 1950 to 2400 and it's multiple offers for rentals again, downtown. So we're gonna see a big, big jump overall downtown. So I think we're gonna see 10 to 15% uptick in rents. They're already starting to make headlines. But uh, as far as GTA, like all of GTA average, I like your five to 7%. That's a very safe and good assumption. And, and, and before I get over to you, Chris, just in case you're, you're wondering, like, how the heck do you go from 1950 to 2400 where there's a rental guideline of 2.1% if you Googled it in Ontario? Just want you to understand that if a building was built after November 15th, 2018 in Ontario, rental guidelines don't apply. So you can increase the rent to, to whatever market. you'd like. Hence, hence how to market. Hence how CMOS and, and our clients are now going from a 1950 over to 2400 where they should be for an average one bedroom condo in my opinion chris your thoughts and forecasts on rents buddy yeah i i'm actually a little more bullish on rents i would say mm -hmm. closer to 10 uh nice. for for the reasons that Simeon laid out as well i think you know the 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 you know barring a major setback with covid i would that would be my caveat i think you're going to see tremendous pressure at one point in time in the in the toughest part of 2020 i think there were six thousand or 7,000 units for rent uh, yeah. on the MLS system. And we're down now closer to 1,000 units. So if you think about it, there's only 1,000 units available going into the new year with borders ultimately opening, I believe. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about the way the world is heading. Uh, I think you're going to see tremendous pressure because kids were supposed to come back to school uh, in in person, I know that the many companies are are planning for for back to the office. Uh, the city of Toronto had planned to come back in January. Unfortunately, they've had to delay uh, having all their folks back. So there's a lot. We're we're on the we're almost there. Yeah, but that kind of change, that pivot again into the market is going to cause that extra price pressure on rents, and that's why I'm 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 closer to double digits. Let's say on on that one, and I'll I'll put my my number on 10 percent okay steven steven rochester who's been behind the ones and twos all year long for all of our brunches do me a favor we are going to have this brunch in uh, uh december 18th 20th whatever it falls on in 2022 just make a note clip the last five minutes of our conversation. And when we start that brunch in 2022, we're going to start it with that five, four to five minute clip just to have some fun. And we're going to see what the numbers actually came out as because now it has been recorded. We had a lot of fun today to get everybody the popcorn who, on the stove, folks. Get the popcorn on the stove. I like that. And, and some eggnog. Why not? Um, with a little bit of vodka or rum in it. Um, to everybody who stuck with us for 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 the last hour and 10 minutes 15 20 minutes um thank you chris why don't you um you know leave our insiders today um with some parting words and then and then i'll go after that and see most you sign us off buddy well first of all, i just want to say thank you guys i always enjoy getting together i've already put it in my calendar for december 17th 2022 <laughs> Brunch with Rack. I've got it down. That's what I was doing there. Um, I put some notes there to make sure that I remember the, our predictions. I look forward to it. Uh, it's it's time in the market, not timing the market. It is seeking out 
great advice. And I think that's my advice is make sure you, you, th this is an amazing place we live. It, it really is. And I think we're, we're just so lucky. Uh, I can't find a better word really to be here uh, in, in a, in a part of the world that is going to see tremendous, tremendous growth. I mean, who wouldn't want to live in this part of the world with all that we have here? Uh, real estate, you know, from our decades of experience, uh, we've, we've seen good, we've seen very challenging markets over the years and at stressful times, but over the long term, the time in the market has made a difference. I encourage everybody to, to find, seek out the best advice and just educate yourself. It's not about whether you're going to buy or sell today or tomorrow or next week or next year. It's just making sure you understand what's going on in the market because the opportunity is massive. Um, and obviously you've got great resources here. Guys, congratulations on a great year. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Always a pleasure to chat and look forward to uh, more conversations and an exciting year in 2022. Well, thank you for all the ongoing support, Chris, and that that and that gets extended um, to your beautiful family at home, um, your brother Jeff, obviously, your father, and and just everybody. Your father and mother have raised two beautiful, beautiful boys. I mean, congratulations to them as well. To everyone else, it is the end of another year coming very, very quickly. Um, again, I said it at the start, but we had a lot more people who joined us in the middle part of the brunch today. Please. Just reach out if like not even from a real estate perspective, if you're going through something um, that you think that we might be able to to bring some value, um, both myself and Simos and the rest of our team um, are are taking Chris's word. Very, very lucky to be where we are. And now is our turn to give back. Our cups are full. They're actually overflowing now. And now we can give back. So please reach out out if you're a small business and you need some support you need some help um, not only like from a financial perspective maybe we bring you on to a brunch talk about your business whatever we do a lot of content between my podcast Simos's podcast we have we have a brunch we do 20 30 pieces of content on the instagrams and the facebooks and all of that our community is quite large our rec insiders now is a little over ten thousand. 10,134 people to be exact. We might be able to help and somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody might be able to help as well. So all I wanted to say was Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Festivus to the rest of us and have yourself a fantastic start to 2022. It is going to be the year of you and we're here to help. Simo, sign us off, brother. Uh, my, my man, I'm not going to repeat any of the thing you said because you hit the nail on the head. We've always supported um, small business because we are small business. Um, as many of you know, we're expanding into many different businesses. And uh, not every business is as fortunate as did a 20% uptick. Uh, businesses were contracting. So take what Jazz said very seriously. If you feel that we can help, you, it is your responsibility to let us know. Uh, and we will help. We always find ways to help. Um, I'm going to go to to the festive message. Um, Jazz did a great job. I'm wishing every single person across this wonderful country that chooses to be with us. I wish you health. I wish you wealth. And I wish you love. Merry Christmas. Signing off from Toronto. We love you. We'll be back next year. Love you guys. We're still here. Send us an email if you need anything. Mwah. Love Thanks, you guys. guys. Take care. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Happy holidays.